So when we talk about traditional survey techniques compared to drone surveying techniques, we're not actually saying we're going to replace the traditional, we're going to use drone surveys to complement uh, what we're already doing in the field. So in terms of the parameters which we can divide this up into, we can talk from a time saving benefit. Typically speaking, when we're using drones, we can save between 60 to 80% time on site by using the drone compared to conventional means. Then there's a cost factor as well. Typically speaking, when we compare the price of D uh, drones to uh, conventional survey uh, technology, Drones come in at very cheap and very good in terms of an entry level price. So something like a little Phantom 4 RTK we can purchase for a few thousand pounds and achieve very high end accurate survey results. There's also this safety element as well. With the current health and safety, uh, working on sites, having boots off ballots in terms of rail and having as minimal amount of people on site as possible, then we can send drones into environments where we don't want to send personnel. Why are construction and survey businesses using drones? So mainly the thing we have to look about when we're looking at drones is that they are very easy to use. Someone with some basic survey knowledge and experience in the field can pick up drones very easily and produce survey grade data sets with some support, simple and effective. Effectively. Now, what the, one of the great benefits of using drones and typically photogrammetry is that they're very visually pleasing. So from one flight, we've got multiple deliverables which we can use, sell, or add value to our um, clients. So typically speaking, if we fly a site, we collect some raw images, we can turn them into multiple data sets. So first of all, we'll be looking at the point cloud, which we can start using for extracting features, uh, taking contours from it. We can also create the author image as well, which can be used for progress reports. Now we can use it to trace up features, which we can then turn into um, a 2D or a 3D drawing. Also from that, we have the, the mesh. Now we can use the mesh on uh, some online portals, which then we can actually share with our clients. So they can get that real value from drone data sets quick, efficiently, and start making basic computations like volumetrics or um, uh, cross sections from that. So if you're looking at a great entry-level drone for survey applications, and the Phantom 4 RTK is fantastic for this. It's built for survey, it's got a calibrated camera, it's small, nimble, and can be easily transportable uh, across site. The great thing about the Phantom 4 RTK is it's compact and ready to go out the box. So it's an integrated screen, that's a calibrated uh, mechanical shutter camera, 20 megapixels and is perfect for survey applications from small to the medium sized area. Great for things like stockpile surveys and flying on small to medium sized sites. If you're working in a bigger survey um, area or a bigger construction site, then the M300 equipped with a P1 photogrammetric cam camera is perfect for that. Main difference between sensors when you're looking from a survey perspective is in terms of efficiency. So if we compare the two camera models, the Phantom 4 RTK with a 20 megapixel camera and the P1 camera at a 45 megapixel image, if we're looking at it in terms of GSD, flying their Phantom 4 RTK at 55 meters, typically speaking we'll be gathering, um, we'll be looking at a GSD of around 1.4 or 1.3 centimeters. When we look at that in comparison to the Zemmuse P1, we can fly around 110 meters and achieve similar GSD. Now what does that mean in context? Well typically what we're speaking, if we're flying at a much higher altitude with a much bigger center size, then we're collecting data, more and more data fast and efficiently. If you're looking at capturing data fast and processing that through very quickly as well, then the L1 is really great for that. Typically with LiDAR, we can collect data faster and process it much quicker through. So typically speaking, if you're looking at flying a site where there's gonna be about 18 minutes flight time, typically in about 28 minutes, you'll get a full colorized point cloud out the other end. Now. Typically with LiDAR, people uh, think about it in terms of penetrating vegetation. Yes, it can do that. There are certain applications where we have to think about if light can get through some vegetation. When we're using drones on construction sites, when we actually look at the data from it as well, we're actually collecting more and more points. So we get better representation of stockpiles or actually surfaces on the ground. So instead of typically a surveyor walking across the site in a grid pattern, we're actually being able to get a much more um, uh, accurate representation of that surface, which means then we can actually create more accurate um, data sets and more accurate uh, results in terms of volumetrics from there.